And Dennis Edney, your reaction to what you just heard from the Office of the Public Safety Minister? Well, you know, Mr. Blaney should go to school and learn some facts. He just mentioned he was an army medic. He wasn't an army medic. In fact, the government well knows that there's not the slightest bit of evidence that Omar Khadr ever threw a hand, a hand grenade at anybody. In fact, what the government knows was a military personnel called Sergeant Claus tortured Omar Khadr and extracted a confession out of him. And Sergeant, which was relied upon in, in the, in the so-called trial in Guantanamo Bay. And Sergeant Claus was later convicted by the military for killing one detainee and crippling two others using the same techniques they used on Omar Khadr. And so this government should be ashamed of themselves because they continue to lie. Here is, the, here is the reaction to Lane Morris, who is another American soldier who was there that day. And he told my colleague Rashmi Nair earlier, it doesn't matter. One of, he says he doesn't care. He says Cotter was part of it, whether he threw the grenade or not. He says he's never been tortured. And as for this claim that you know, he was, he confessed under torture. He says Omar Cotter and his lawyers are picking and choosing uh, what is, what decisions are favorable to them and discounting what isn't. What's your response to that? Mr. Lane Morris can't be relied upon. Mr. Lane Morris went to trial in Guantanamo Bay and indicated that he had saw Omar Cotter and then later admitted to Michelle Shepard of the Toronto Star in a taped conversation that he hadn't seen Omar Khadr. That in fact, as the, f the fighting started in that compound, he was hit by shrapnel from the wall and was flo flown out. So, I, Mr. he has no credibility whatsoever. He's also a very bitter and very bigoted individual. This is, this is, of course, the argument that you're making, that he is not responsible and that this was obtained under torture, is, in fact, the basis of your appeal. Well, you have to, Canada, the Canadian people should consistently remind themselves that the Canadian government was found by the Supreme Court of Canada to have been complicit, along with the Americans, in torturing Omar Khadr in Guantanamo Bay. Think about that. What kind of government can one believe in? What kind of country are we when our government participates in the torture of a child? It's not me saying that. It's what our Supreme Court said. What you're referring to is the Supreme Court of Canada's decision that said that the government of Canada violated uh, Omar Cotter's rights when they sent Department of Foreign Affairs interrogators to Guantanamo Bay, interrogated Omar Cotter, gave those records to the U.S. government after being told with full knowledge that he had been subjected to severe sleep de deprivation. The, the Canadian government was advised that Omar Khadr would be put into a sleep deprivation mode in anticipation of their arrival. And, and the Supreme Court of, of um, Israel has, has ruled on sleep deprivation, describing it as one of the more effective torture instruments one could use. And if you look at the documentary, You Don't Wish to Know the Truth involving Omar Khadr, we actually were able to obtain a tape recording of those interviews, where Omar Khadr is talking about how he had been tortured. And so we have abused this young man. And, and the story of Omar Khadr is a story about who we are as human beings, to what extent we wish to uphold the rule of law. The rule of law is being violated every day by our government. For 10 years, we have won every single case against this government on behalf of Omar Khadr. And I'm talking about myself and my co-counsel, Nate Whitley. And each and every time, this government delays it by appealing, using taxpayers' money while I use my own personal savings, only to be defeated. It refuses to listen to, to our courts, from the Supreme Court down to the Court of Appeal of Alberta. And it says, it says everything about how they disregard the rule of law. Mr. I, Mr. Edme, I, oh, go ahead. Make your well, point. I, sorry. So they're going to appeal the bill. Yes. And string things out. We'll see. In May, I'm in the Supreme Court again. 
because they appealed the unanimous decision of the Court of Appeal. I think Canadians should be concerned and should be, let the government know of the kind of law and order that they really wish. The Canadian government has argued that, well, there were two things that the judge had to decide today. One, that she was actually capable of making this decision, having the right to grant a Canadian citizen bail pending an American appeal, and then making the decision about the bail itself. I haven't heard the terms for the or the basis for the appeal from the Canadian government, but I'm guessing it will be that she didn't have the right to make that decision. Well, that's interesting because it didn't make that argument in the application. So what we, do you suspect will be the basis of this appeal? I don't wish to speculate. I'll wait to see what nonsense they come up with and then I'll challenge it. What conditions are you looking for for his bail? Well, you know, Omar Khan is a moral prisoner. Not only in Canada, we provided all kinds of information and documents from the Pentagon and from Pentagon and from Guantanamo that described Omar Khan as a good kid. We also provided Department of Foreign Affairs reports of their officials who were going to Guantanamo from time to time. And they have glowing recommendations about Omar Khan. The problem is, this government didn't want to accept that and describe them the way they wished to describe them. And so it, there's nothing on his record to demonstrate he has any ideological leanings. There's nothing to suggest that he is a threat to anyone. He is someone who has strived greatly to educate himself and he, and as I say, he's a, he's a model prisoner by correctional services standards. Yeah, but, and so but it, rema be. it remains, though, that still he has these charges, this conviction against him. He may not have been the one who threw the grenade, but he was still there, not on behalf of the United States or the Allies, but on behalf of al-Qaeda. That's not true. It, it, it's easy to say that. He got dumped there by his father in a house with, with, uh, with Taliban warriors. And I remember saying to Omar, how come he didn't run away? He said, if I'd run away, they would have killed me. Remember who he is. He was a 15-year-old youth who was entitled to all kinds of international protections from the Convention of the Rights of the Child onwards. He, his rights have all been violated. He was put into Guantanamo Bay, the only Westerner in Guantanamo Bay, the only child in Guantanamo Bay, a torture center, Every Western country recognized that Guantanamo Bay was beyond the rule of law, requested and were granted the release of all their, of their adult detainees. This young man has been abused nonstop. You have to look at the circumstances. And at, at, at the very worst, one could argue, if, in, assuming he did throw a hand grenade, which we say he didn't, that he was a child soldier. Canada and the United States spend millions of dollars rehabilitating child soldiers in Sierra Leone. What is it wrong with Omar Khadr? What is it this government, Mr. Harper, has against Omar Khadr? Is it the fact he's a Muslim? I will leave it on that question, and we'll see what happens in May, and we'll see what happens with the federal government's uh, decision to appeal the decision that granted him bail. Dennis Edney, lawyer for Omar Khadr, thank you for joining me from Edmonton.